What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB, and more specifically, an episode of Let's Talk Dynasty. Now, the fantasy football regular season, it is come and gone. Hopefully, you are playing in the fantasy football playoffs, but today on this episode, it is our 2024 fantasy football awards show. We want to talk about the players that helped you hopefully get to those fantasy football playoffs. All of these guys are award winners for the 2024 season. We'll talk about nominees, the predictions we made at the beginning of the year, and who won won those awards but we cannot do that today without my co-host so let's get mfgds into the building and let's start talking about some fantasy football award winners war how we doing today man hey man we doing good fantasy playoffs are here none of my dynasty teams made the playoffs they all finished in seventh except for one team where i was intentionally tanking so progress but not yet there tough tough i know last year you uh when we did this award show because i went back and i watched it last year when we did it you said i'm rebuilding so this year you went from rebuilding to now you were fighting for a playoff spot next year that means you're in right yeah yeah that's that's the plan except for one team they're one year behind so next season for them should be fighting for a playoff spot so we'll see okay. <clears throat> all right so two-year builds there not bad um look we got the fantasy football award shows today uh we have a total of nine awards that we're going to be giving out in today's episode as always like we did last year these awards are voted upon by our community here at the league ffb in our discord so we did not pick the award winners these were voted by our community last year we had you know we had some gripes with who the award winners were i think dak prescott won quarterback of the year last year and both you and i said hey he had a good second half of the season but he wasn't the best fantasy football quarterback i think there were some other guys that we talked about um but look i think we should just get right into it we'll hit all of the positions who was the best player at each position and then we'll go into biggest bust waiver wire pickup of the year breakout player of the year rookie of the year and then the fantasy football mvp so let's kick it off right now at the tight end position so this year we had uh not the best tight end play i would say there were some busts like dalton kincaid there was some busts like even travis kelsey didn't give us the best of years now when you look at the overall nominees for this position brock bowers was one of the names that came to mind george kittle was a name that came to mind trey mcbride and then Jonu freaking smith snuck in there as a nominee this year at the tight end position who would have thought that when you look back at our predictions this year you predicted at the beginning of the year that dalton kincaid would end up being the the tight end of the year didn't really work out my prediction was trey mcbride he's a nominee is he gonna win the award i'm not sure but if you guys want to know who the award winner is the winner of the tight end of the year goes to brock bowers at a total of 88 percent of the votes he had 88 percent of the votes runner up here this year was george kittle actually at 12 percent. so hey you preached all off season there's another generational talent in this draft there's another player that we're not talking about and his name is brock bowers brock bowers as a rookie comes in and wins tight end of the year maybe the tight end position isn't the toughest award to win but how do you feel about the brock bowers nomination i feel pretty damn good about it he has replaced isaiah likely is my favorite tight end um <laughs> brock bowers oh my god he he's just uh, he, he's as generational as i thought he was in fact i would say and tell me if i'm wrong he's the most generational of the generational rookies that came into this, the draft this season he's more generational as of yet than caleb williams he's more generational as of yet than marvin harrison jr and he just went out there and did the damn thing brock bowers the shining light in the darkness known as the las vegas raiders yeah i mean you're right i think when it comes to the generational talents i mean we said marvin caleb brock those were kind of the guys that were there i think you're right man brock bowers this year 13 games played at the moment of this recording 118 targets 87 receptions 933 receiving yards four touchdowns all of that being said good for fantasy points per game number two at the tight end position 15.8 fantasy points per game as a rookie tight end we know that those tight ends they said rookie tight ends they take a while to break out you know it takes a couple years for them to get their feet wet brock bowers did it from day one uh i have no gripes you know with the award winner when it came down to tight end of the year i, I will say the runner up i don't necessarily agree with i think trey mcbride probably was the runner up i mean when you look at fantasy points per game he was balling this year um and he did it without finding the end zone you know it's crazy to me that trey mcbride has done this without getting into the end zone 
it just ima- imagine if he gets some touchdowns. I don't know. Everyone's saying it's the the positive regressions happening this week. We'll see if it happens. But um, I mean, I really have no gripes with it. Brock Bowers, he's he's a generational tight end prospect, general tight end talent, and I think um, I mean, no no doubt about it. To you, tight end one off the board next year in all drafts, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's crazy because I feel like we were having this conversation last season about Sam Laporta, and Sam Laporta kind of took a step back this year, and now we have Brock Bauer. So we'll see how it goes um, with the Raiders possibly, most likely, bring in a new quarterback. And I think that's only going to elevate his stock during draft time. You're going to be busting down that AP? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. <clears throat> All right, man. Well, let's move on to the next position. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to go quarterback of the year here. Quarterback of the year. We had a, quite a few nominees. There's actually a lot of good quarterback play uh, at the top this year. A lot of the quarterback play in the middle into the back end was uh, hit and miss this season, it felt like. But the top of the top was the top. So when you look at the quarterback of the year, the nominees that we have are Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, and Joe Burrow. When you look at the quarterback of the year predictions that you and I made back at the beginning of the season, your prediction was C.J. Stroud ends up being quarterback of the year. My Mm. prediction was Josh Allen ends up being quarterback of the year. So if we're looking at these award winners and we're looking at the voting, when you come down to it, the winner of the quarterback of the year award goes to Josh, Josh. Allen. <laughs> Look, Josh Allen got 63% of the vote here. Uh, there was votes pretty much scattered across the board for everybody else. Lamar Jackson, the runner up at 22%. So it was Josh and Lamar. They accounted for uh, 85% of the votes. The other one, third place go- uh, vote getter was Joe Burrow. When it came down to it, I think uh, a lot of people voted with maybe some recency bias. Josh yeah. Allen gave us the, the best quarterback performance of all time. Uh, in fantasy football just a week ago. I yeah. I don't disagree with it either, though, at the same time. Josh Allen, he has been on a heater this year. I think there was a lot of narratives coming into it. Uh, maybe he takes a step back. Stephon Diggs departs town. Gabe Davis no longer in town. He's throwing to guys like Curtis Samuel, who, by the way, did not hit. Curtis Samuel was not a good player for them this year. Khalil Shakir, Keon Coleman, who we didn't love Keon Coleman as a prospect. Yet somehow, even Dalton Kincaid, like we said, failed to meet the expectation. Somehow, Josh Allen still balling out. Um, Didn't matter. It doesn't matter who is around him. He's going to perform. How do you feel about him winning the award? Uh, Is Josh Allen just him at this point? I think he would have gotten the award even without the recency buys. He's just been absolutely killing it this year like this honestly this vote to me was a no-brainer Josh Allen as great as Lamar has been Josh Allen has just been that much better it feels kind of weird kind of odd that Patrick Mahomes has settled into this low-end quarterback one quarterback two territory this more so IRL best quarterback in the NFL territory but we have Josh Allen the king of quarterbacks in fantasy football I picked CJ Stroud last year boy was I wrong um I'm worried about his long-term future at this point so he's went from possible quarterback of the year candidate to kind of worried about him and so yeah man this Josh Allen pick was spot on you hit it dead on the money Andrew and I should have seen it coming yeah I mean look I, I'm not gonna sit here and say like you know I saw the future but at the same time you know Josh Allen is was projected to be good I mean we weren't taking him late he was coming off the board as like QB3 I think at the latest in most drafts but at the end of the day like he just felt like A guy, and I said it multiple times, if you want to go back and watch the prediction, it felt like a guy who would have to lean on, you know, has athleticism a little bit more now that Stefan Diggs is out of town, run the football a little bit more, throw the football a little bit more because they might be in, you know, game scripts where they have to play from behind that part may not have been true i don't know if he's necessarily been playing from behind that much this year to be honest but uh overall i i do feel like josh allen man he has been balling i'm looking at the stats right now 13 games played we have 393 passing attempts for 3,000 yards the completion percentage 64 percent the rushing yards 416 yards nine touchdowns there um that that rushing yardage total is pretty close to what he did the year before and that's with four less games. He's only about 100 yards off of it right now. So we'll see where that goes. The passing touchdowns there at 23, 23.7 fantasy points per game. He's been balling out. I think there's no question about it. Lamar Jackson, probably very worthy of this award as well. Like we said, the runner up. Um, he looks like he could potentially, potentially be running for a 3P MVP. I think Josh Allen has kind of stole that from him uh, yeah. right now. Just popular vote. But uh, yeah, man, I have no gripes with this award either. Um, we, we didn't talk too much about Joe Burrow. Should we talk about 
about Joe Burrow because Joe, Joe Burrow was, you know, the third highest vote getter, but he's been on a heater this year as well. Joe Burrow, love Joe Burrow. Um, he has been on a heater. Um, it's just such a shame that that's all kind of just going away. It's like as far as like team play, <laughs> but fantasy play, he is definitely doing his damn thing. Um, Joe Burrow, I just can't see, I just can't see a possible path for him to have won this award with the way Josh Allen is playing. Like Josh Allen is like, full disclosure, I'm in a league, in a redraft league where they let Josh Allen fall to sixth. I was picking him on the first and I got him. And needless to say, I'm like 13 and three in that league, 13 and one in that league. So I only lost one time is because Josh Allen is a bona fide league winner. Like, I don't know anyone who has Josh Allen on their team who didn't perform well this season unless the rest of their team was just complete crap. But as far as Joe Burrow, God bless him. He's an amazing talent. He's putting up amazing numbers, but he is not the winner of this award. Yeah, man. I mean, just again, I lost. I got eliminated out of the playoffs in the BDGE league. Um, and I played against Josh Allen, man, on that the best performance ever. I played against him. It was a must win game for me. And to give you, you know, context, my team in there is no slouch. My team is a, is a good ass team. I got uh Saquon Barkley, uh Joe Mixon, Puka Nakua. Like I got I got duds, you know what I'm saying? And Josh Allen's performance was so good. It knocked me out. It didn't matter, man. It, it still knocked me out. Uh he's just been so good this year. Um I mean, I think there was a lot of people in Dynasty Leagues that maybe felt like there was going to be some regression, you know, cuz he was being viewed kind of as QB1, QB2. It's still Josh Allen to me. And to be honest, it almost feels like Josh Allen has solidified himself as QB1. Yeah, so. because really, it was always a three-person race. Usually, usually it's a three-person race between him, Lamar, Patrick, Joe. But I maybe, like maybe Jalen. Maybe Jalen. Um, I think he kind of just ran away with it, man. Hey, what can you say? I guess we'll move on to the next position. We are going to be talking about running back of the year. Uh, look, there was nominees here of Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, Joe Mixon, and Al. Alvin Kamara. Uh, at the beginning of the year, the prediction that you gave us was Jameer Gibbs. I don't think that that was a bad prediction. Uh, the prediction I gave was Brees Hall. Uh, maybe a worse prediction there. Uh, but that being said, I don't I don't think we need to do a full drum roll. We, we kind of know who the award winner is because this guy took the league by storm. Running back of the year, Saquon Barkley. Uh, this is one that I almost feel like, how did we not see this coming? You know, Saquon... We're talking about generational talents. This is a guy who was a generational talent. He's playing for a bad New York Giants offense for a long time. He goes to the Philadelphia Eagles. Good offensive line. Good offense. A lot of scoring opportunities. And I think we all ran narratives some more than most i will say uh, i think on this channel we didn't fade saquon as hard as some of the other channels did but there was uh the tush push worries and there was the jason kelsey worries and there was all these other worries about saquon doesn't matter dude's putting out one of the greatest running back fantasy football seasons we have ever seen i just i sent a screenshot in our group chat the other day 2017 todd Gurley, 2023 christian mccaffrey 2024 saquon barkley saquon is on par with both of those guys we know how good saquon Saquon was. I mean, we know how good Christian McCaffrey was last year. We know how good Todd Gurley was that year. Saquon's on par with those guys, man. He is dominating right now. Absolutely a league winning pick. If you drafted him, you're probably in the playoffs. Unless you're me, I guess. Uh, but other than that, you know, that's where you're at. But uh, runner ups of this award, it was a two way tie. Only 3%. Saquon took 94% of the vote. 3% went to Derrick Henry. And 3% went to Joe Mixon. I think two guys that also were kind of worthy of, of a nod, maybe not over Saquon, but those guys are having good ass years as well. You know, that's not bad years from those guys. How are we feeling about Saquon Barkley at 94%? And uh, you think those other guys deserve any type of conversation? I think this also was a no brainer, just like the uh, Josh Allen thing. But I would say at the beginning of the season, it was definitely a two horse race between me and Derrick Henry. But um, as time went on, Saquon has pulled away from that race. What do you notice, Andrew? What, what do you notice about all four of the candidates you have here? All four of the candidates are Older past the running back cliff that we are known to have all these guys. And look at them. All four of them out there dominating. Kamara, I don't think people wrote him off for dead, but I definitely think that people like had a little less faith in him this season as they had in previous season. Joe Mixon, we kind of just completely wrote him off because why would the Bengals let him go if he was so, not the Bengals, yeah. Why would the we Bengals wrote him, him off? Go if, okay, you you never write him off. And when I say <laughs> we, I mean everybody except you. We, we, we wrote him off and 
you know, look at him. He's out there balling. Henry, I, I feel like we write him off every season. Every season, this is the season where he declines, and then he somehow overcomes that. And Saquon, he definitely had the greatest chance of overcoming coming a running back cliff, if not only purely by the motivation of proving that the New York Giants did him wrong by allowing him to leave the building and joining a division rival. So, yeah, um, I definitely seen the Saquon thing coming, but man, it's been an amazing year for older running backs for sure yeah i mean i agree dude and, and one thing even to note about this is that uh three of the four nominees saquon henry and mixon all are on new teams so you know it's yeah. older running backs past the age cliff onto a new roster which a lot of the times when a running back at that age leaves their you know long-term team to go to a new team it's usually not great you get more so uh guys like aaron jones you know who leave the green bay packers being a top 12 guy and then they go to the vikings and he hasn't had a bad year but he's been whatever you know you kind of get more of that or you get a guy like deandre swift for the bears you know who goes to a different team and ends up not being great like that's yeah. usually what happens when uh you leave that, that team because you're right those teams they move on from you for a reason typically mm -hmm. felt like the reasons why maybe derrick henry maybe saquon and maybe joe mixon got moved on from were not necessarily talent we're not necessarily anything like that but more so financial decisions and it makes me think about process in the future pay attention pay attention to those older running backs especially guys like saquon and henry and mixon who have been previously studs you know in fantasy football it's not like they just became studs these guys have been studs for a long time and they got moved on because of financial Financials. makes me think about pay attention to what happens when those guys move on because it's easy to go into the narrative of oh he's washed because you know they moved on from him yeah if it's financial there's a chance that these guys still actually probably have a lot left in the tank and i think those guys do uh that being said saquon and henry and mixon are all probably going to be overvalued this off season in in your dynasty leagues um yeah. so the problem is you're probably going to have to be finding new guys that maybe can can do that because i think these guys are going to be too valuable for you to be buying um it's just funny man i look at this list and and all four of those names i did a video before the season uh where it was like veteran running backs to buy on contending rosters and it was like budget buys right like we're trying to buy like older guys at a cheap cost all of these guys were in it i thought they would be like good you know role players for your fantasy team to go in yeah. and help you win i didn't think these guys would be winning you championships this year I didn't think that that was going to happen. So uh, all of these guys over exceeded expectations um, in a good way. So, it, you know, I'm, I'm not I don't have anything to say about them. I think your pick of Jameer Gibbs, the prediction, I don't think it was a bad one. Jameer's having a really good year as well. Um, but I just want to run through these stats for Saquon Barkley, man. 13 games played right now. 266 rushing attempts. He has 1600 yards rushing. 1600. 13 games. Just let that sink in. Averaging 6.1 yards per carry. That is the highest of his career by a by a mile. He has 29 receptions right now. A lot of people felt like the receptions were going to go down because, hey, Jalen Hurts doesn't check down the football. Doesn't really matter. Last year in 2023 uh, with the Giants, he had 41. This year he has 29 through 13 games. I think he'll be pretty close when it's all said and done. Receiving yardage. He has 267 yards and 13 total touchdowns, averaging 23.1 fantasy points per game. The second best of his whole career, only behind rookie season Saquon Barkley, where he had 15 touchdowns. And that was on 16 games. So like I said, you know, he's played 13 right now. He's probably going to pass that again you know when it's all said and done so saquon having one of those years man it, it's like like i said an absolute league winning pick uh i have nothing negative to say about that so let's move on to the wide receiver of the year that'll get us through the uh the position groups there's a couple nominees here that we can talk about jamar chase is one of them justin jefferson amon ross st brown and Terry McLaurin snuck in here as a nominee as well. Terry McLaurin having a very good year. I think a lot of people didn't expect what he's done. Uh, when it's all said and done, though, look at the award winner. I think kind of similar to Saquon Barkley, we know who this is going to be. Jamar Chase, man. Jamar Chase is having one of those years. And actually, when you look at the voting here, we had 94% of the votes go to Saquon at the running back award. How does 97% of the votes sound for Jamar Chase? Sound about right? Sounds pretty damn good. It's mine. Can you? Man, you know, him and JJ, like, it's almost like as far as my favorite receivers in the league, they're like 1A and 1B. So, but 97%, that's kind of crazy. Um, But who do you I think do... has the other 3%? JJ. He got 0% of the votes. No way. It was Terry McLaurin. Okay, like, come on. Okay, let's let's pump our brakes here. <laughs> let's pump our brakes here. Gary Terry, yeah, we get it, but uh, no, no. Yeah, man. Jamar Chase, ninety-seven percent of the votes. It's it's been one of those years, man. We talked about it with Joe Burrow. I mean, 
this is a team that has been playing from behind a lot of the year. The defense is is horrible in Cincinnati, and they've been throwing the football a ton. Um, also, you look at Jamar Chase, 24.4 fantasy points per game is what he's averaging right now. It's number one by a large margin. Uh, keep in mind, this is a guy who at the beginning of the offseason was holding out. You might have got him at a decent value because he was holding out going into the year because, hey, he wanted some money. Cincinnati, the price of the bag just went up. You probably should have paid him last offseason because the bag just went up. Uh, 127 targets, 93 receptions, 1,300 yards, 15 touchdowns in 13 games right now. He's averaging more than one touchdown a game on the year, not just like a stretch of the year. The whole year, he's averaging more than one touchdown on the game. So, or on the per game. I, I think this is one of the better wide receiver seasons I can remember. I think it also helps that this year it feels like the wide receiver production is down. Uh, we've seen a lot of people talking about that. Matt Harmon talked about how wide receiver production is down. Uh, the top end guys, I think there was a statistic. I, I wish I could remember it off the top of my head. Something about like through 12 games this year, we only had a couple thousand plus yard receivers. Uh, and previous years we had like 11. And this year we had like two or three. So it's like the production is down. We've had a lot of wide receiver injuries so far this year. Um, you know, guys like Ayuk, we've seen guys like Godwin go down. We've seen guys like Mike Evans miss time. Puk Nakua missed like six games or more. Uh, there's been a lot of injuries, right? And so it feels like this is a year where the production is down a little bit and it's even not taking away from from Jamar Chase's production, but it feels like it's almost like accentuating it, right? Like you have guys who aren't performing and then the one guy who is, it's just like cherry on top. You just feel extra good about him. And so I think that's part of the reason as well. That's why you see the 97% because even though JJ is having a good year, it's not like uh, it's not like Jamar Chase's. It doesn't feel like Jamar Chase's because Jamar is going out there and he's giving you a 50 point week and winning you the week because he scores two touchdowns for 200 yards against the Ravens. It, it just, it feels a little bit different, I think, for Jamar this year. And um, I, I truly do believe like him, Saquon and and Josh Allen are like, it, there's teams that could have put together that roster because Saquon was a second round pick. Jamar was a first round pick and you could have got Josh Allen in one QB leagues, you know, a little bit later as well. You could have put together a super squad this year and it would have been all three of those guys. And you could have got Brock Bowers late probably. Yeah. Yeah, I've done it. <laughs> yeah. Like, so yeah, definitely, man. I don't know, man. It, it just feels good. So no, no gripes with that. The only thing you said is zero, no zero percent for JJ. That feels that feels wrong. That feels weird. Yeah, it feels weird, man. I I should have gave him an honorary, just like Minnesota Vikings fan vote. I should have done that. But I, I'm thinking? true. I'm true to the cause, and I I voted Jamar Chase. I feel like he was the best wide receiver this year. Look, I'm not going to let the fandom, you know, steer me away. For those of you that think I I, I let the fandom steer me away, I'll, I love talking Minnesota Vikings, man, but I, I will vote, honestly. I, I have integrity here. I'm the one with no integrity, guys. Just just know that in this, <laughs> in this duo, I'm the one who will let the team steer me away. So Yeah, if it's a, if it's a Bears player, he, he will let you... You know, he'll they go up the rankings just a little bit because they play in Chicago. But I also steer them in the opposite direction very prematurely if I have to. So, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Well, let's go to these uh, next awards. Um, we're getting into the kind of the fun ones. We've done the positions. We've gone through the tight end, the quarterback, the running back, the wide receiver. Now we get to talk about bust, waiver wire pickups, breakout players and rookies of the year uh, MVP as well. But look, let's talk about the biggest bust in fantasy football this is really the only negative award that we have everybody else you know they want to get the award they want to put it on the shelf at home you know they're thankful for it if you get this award this is one that you might throw in the trash you don't want to keep this one at home you know you don't want anybody to remember that you won this award but this year there was quite a few nominees i have six nominees for the biggest bust of the year per the league ffb community you got guys like tyree kill in nomination Brees hall nominee uh jonathan taylor marvin harrison jr travis etn and Debo Samuel. Those are the nominees. Uh, this year, our predictions. War, you predicted Derrick Henry. You predicted Derrick Henry is the biggest bust. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm doing horrible at this. Oh, man. I predicted... Devonte Adams as the biggest bust this year. Is there an on, argument he could have he could have been nominated if he didn't get traded? To be honest, yeah, yeah. But uh, we got those six nominees. I'm just gonna let you get an, a quick prediction. Who of those guys do you think wins? I mean, honestly, it should be Travis Etienne. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he's well, the biggest bust, but he busted the most. Let's uh. You don't want a drum roll, like I said, but the oh. biggest bust of the year, Travis Etienne Jr., man. Um, look, he received 39% of the votes. So the votes were spread across the board a little bit. The runner-up here actually uh, was Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill got 30% of the votes just behind Travis Etienne. Now, when you look at Travis Etienne's draft capital this year, full disclosure, 
for the folks at home, if you've been following along, Travis Etienne was a my guy for me this year. I made him a my guy. He's the biggest bust in fantasy football. Did not turn out the way that I thought it was. If you go back two years ago, you've been watching a long time. I was nervous about Tank Bigsby. Yeah. I did not get nervous about Tank Bigsby this year, and then Tank Bigsby burnt me. So not only did it burn me the year before where I was wrong about Bigsby being a, a factor, then I said, okay, let me correct my wrong. Tank Bigsby is no longer a factor. Then I was wrong again because Tank Bigsby became a factor. I Next year, we're not discussing Jacksonville Jaguars running back situations. No, no need. To. I'm not. I'm not touching any of them. It doesn't matter because if we think Tank Bigsby is going to be good next year, he's not going to be. If we think he's going to be bad next year, he's going to be a league winner. It's just the way it is. The Jacksonville Jaguars backfield has been cursed for me for two years now. Uh, but the ADP for Travis Etienne this year it got high. He was coming off the board as the 17th overall player. That's a early to mid second round pick in those one quarterback leagues. Yeah, he uh, he burnt a lot of people. 39. percent Um. I mean, you agree, right? You, I mean, you predicted. You said it should be Travis Etienne. Yeah, Travis Etienne. But see, I've never trusted Travis Etienne. <laughs> that, that, that's the thing. I've never been a Travis Etienne guy. So that just surprised me. No, I think a lot of it has to do with, let's be honest, the bust of Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> like, yeah. like I'm, I know you're not. I know you're probably still, you know, standing on the ship, you know, looking out to the ocean, like still thinking Trevor could be the captain. But this, I'm this much so hope is is what i got left about this much yeah i'm i'm not so sure about that not a good representation of the generational quarterback tag um yeah man i think that played a huge role in jacksonville i also think that that team is just done like in terms of they played hard last week but i think in general they're just done like and i think that plays into it and i can't I can't, I'll be remiss if I didn't mention the aforementioned Tank Bigsby and his elevation, but even he like has cooled off. So I think it's just that backfield in general. And I think you have the right mindset, Andrew, is that you really can't go into next season thinking about any of the running back. But because we're thinking like that, Travis Etienne returns, huge season. Bounce back here. <laughs> Bounce back here. So, dude, I, is is ETN even going to be in Jacksonville next year? I think is the question. Um, he's in a contract year. I'm pretty sure right now. Uh, let me just double check that. I think he is in a contract year though. If he is, you know, are they going to pay him money to stay? I can't imagine they pay him money to stay, right? Hell no. You just drafted me one of those, especially in this upcoming draft. So I mean, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely not paying him. I think a lot of guys are going to get paid. There's going to be a lot of guys cut. Yeah. I mean, he, so they, it looks like he has a club option next year, which, uh, means he'll be a free agent in 2026 so he he is under contract next year but also last year your contract potentially new coach in the building rebuild or retool on the way can you trade there was travis Etienne trade rumors at the deadline this offseason you know people were saying could minnesota potentially trade for travis Etienne? could you know a, a tampa bay trade for travis Etienne? there was rumors at the at the deadline um i don't know man i i don't know i'm looking at his games this year 99 rushing attempts 391 rushing yards two touchdowns that's the year for Travis Etienne the year before you know he had a thousand yards almost 500 receiving 12 touchdowns he was the RB7 in fantasy points per game this year he's the RB37 in fantasy points per game it's just been a it's been a fall off for Travis Etienne um I, I'm gonna say though and I I don't want to I don't, I'm saying this, I'm putting a disclaimer in front of this because I don't want people to come back because I've had enough of, of stamping Travis Etienne at this point or not stamping Travis Etienne that I don't want to do it again for a third time and then have people come back and be like, bro, give up. Um, I think, I think he's a buy in dynasty at the moment. I think he's a buy because his value is so low right now that I feel like he's going to have value some, I, I think he'll exceed where his value's at right now. So I don't want to buy Travis Etienne, but he is a buy if you're looking at it like from the dictionary definition i want to talk about tyree kill though because 13 games played right now 96 targets 65 receptions 760 receiving yards and five touchdowns he's the wide receiver 26 in fantasy points per game the wide receiver 26 for tyree kill you drafted him his adp was third in drafts in one qb leagues you took him in a, a top five pick and he's finished as the wide receiver 26 in fantasy points per game a lot of this i think people are giving him a pass to a missed games what can you do i think that pass is a little bit overblown just a little bit overblown because look, you're still Tyreek effing Hill. You gotta 
perform. It doesn't even matter who the quarterback is. I think Tyreek, even if if uh, I say this jokingly, folks at home, don't get offended when I say this. If you and I are the damn quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, I'm getting Tyreek the ball at least six, seven times. You know, it's screen pass, pass. You know, I'm going to hand him the damn football. I'm going to run him off a jet screen. You know what I mean? Like, let him just, uh, whatever you got to do, bro, I'm getting you the ball. And Tyreek, it's your job to perform. And Snoop Huntley and uh, what's other boy's name? Um, who's who was the other? I can't remember. They're bumps. They're bumps. They're bumps. Um, but you can still get him the football. It just to me, it feels like Tyreek. Maybe just because of the draft capital, Skyler and then Thompson. Skylar Thompson. You're right. Um, uh, still a bum. Uh, still, yeah. Yeah, it still feels like you gotta. I think Ty, I think there's a a world where Tyreek wins this award. I think he might have he might have should have won it. <laughs> yeah, man. When you said wide receiver twenty six, I was like, really? Because as you know, I have multiple stocks of of Jalen Waddle, but I mean, he's kind of saying, I actually was surprised that he wasn't somewhere on the nominee list. I was like, please don't say Waddle, but he's been heating up a little bit lately. I mean, yeah, you didn't, I think the reason why he wasn't on the nominee list is because you didn't spend as high of draft capital to get him yeah. this year. Whereas guys yeah. like ETN were early second round picks. Uh, Tyreek was a top five pick. Like a lot of those guys we mentioned, even Brees Hall, first round pick, uh, Jonathan Taylor, early second round pick. They were all drafted very highly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a surprise, man. I have a feeling though that Tyreek's going to turn it on these last few weeks of the season and prove that he that the that the community was right that he didn't deserve this award award. So, Maybe. but still, I, he hasn't given you the season that many have wanted, and he's probably cost some people some playoff spots just not being the juggernaut that he usually is. But again, this goes back to what you said, and um, I believe it was the previous um category that. His wide receivers production is just down across the league this season, and he's For definitely sure. one of the proponents of that downward um, trajectory. So yeah, and I'll put it out there too. Obviously, folks at home they're saying, "Why didn't Chris McCaffrey win the award?" Chris McCaffrey was the biggest bust in fantasy football this year. We excluded him from the award because he would have had a unanimous vote as the biggest bust. Also, I don't necessarily believe it's fair to give the award to somebody who missed pretty much the entire year due to injury. Injury and poor play being a bust because of poor play, I think, is worse than being a bust because of injury. If you're injured, yeah. you know, I can take you out of the lineup. I can drop you to the waiver. I can replace the spot. If I have Tyree Kill or if I have Travis Etienne and you're healthy the whole year and I have to decide between playing you and Devon Vele because you're scoring the same points as Devon Vele, now we got an issue. <laughs> That's a bust. <laughs> That's a bust. So I just wanted to put that out there. Um, let's move on to the waiver wire pickup, the waiver wire pickup of the year nominees. Um, and for the record, we didn't make predictions on waiver wire at the beginning of the year. I think it's it's really impossible to make a waiver wire prediction at the beginning of the year, but uh, we didn't do it. The nominees were Jawan Jennings, Bo Nix, Bucky Irving, Tyrone Tracy Jr., and Sam Darnold. The winner of the award here is going to go to Bucky Irving. Bucky Irving wins the award here for the waiver wire pickup of the year. Look, man, uh, runner up here was Bo Nix. Bo Nix got 24% of the votes. Bucky Irving got 42% of the votes. There was uh, votes pretty much spread across the entire way to Jennings, to Tracy. The only player who did not receive a single vote was Sam Darnold as a waiver wire pickup. Uh, are we still hating on Sam Darnold because he's like QB6 right now, bro. We, why, are we, why are we doing this? But uh, we're not here to talk about Sam Darnold. How do you feel about Bucky? Uh, the name Bucky Irving is... Sore spot right now? Yeah, man. Traded him right before... Look, look, look. Okay, look. Let's look at, let's look at the situation. Look, look, look. Okay, guys. Yes, I traded Bucky Irving. I traded him. All right, I traded him for Brian Robinson. Now understand mm. this: I traded him the week before Tampa Bay decided to give him the keys to the car. Does he even have the keys to the car? Because it looks like it's still going by the hot hand. So he I don't know, but now. yeah. So I definitely regret it. Not that Brian Robinson is, you know, a bum or anything, but I just looked at the usage. Simple as that. And um, but man, I, I have no gripes. I'm not gonna say I have no gripes. All these to me, this is a two person, two part player race between Bucky and Sam Darnold. I have no clue. I know you're not you're here to talk about Sam Darnold, but we have to because <laughs> I have no clue why people no are hate Sam Darnold. Do you realize that if we're talking dynasty or redraft, if you just happen to 
to be in the draft where you said, okay, I, I'll take a flyer on Slam Sam at that. Because keep in mind, Andrew will be the very first person in the front of the line to tell you this. Nobody expected Minnesota to do this this season. And Sam Darnold was about Andrew's probably like, I expected it. Sam no, Darnold. No, no. <laughs> I, I, my mind instantly went back to where you and I on the uh, divisional previews, we said that the line that the sports book set for Minnesota was low. I think they had yeah. him at like six wins. They had him at six and a half yeah. wins. And I think we both said like, okay, Minnesota still has a good team, you know? And at the time, I think when yeah. we did it too, we expected Darnold to play like the first eight and we expected JJ McCarthy to play the last eight. Yeah. That's what we kind of yeah. expected to happen. Um, yeah. Sam's burning his ass off. He, he is. And, and you know, back to my point, if he, if he, if you drafted him as a flyer at the end of a draft or just like, you likely are in a very good position in your league because I've even drafted him in one of our leagues. I drafted him is just the end of the draft third quarterback let's just let's just have him there guy in you know he performed I, and i was able to trade him for something but he performed and i think people were sleeping on sam so if you were able to pick him up on the waiver wire you know kudos to you kudos if you picked up bucky Irvin. i do think he is the right vote but um i have no clue why sam donald is uh not getting more recognition here yeah, I mean, I think probably because, you know, Sam Darnold, you probably feel a little bit better about him in a super flex. But even then, in one QB, like I said, he's like QB seven on the year right now, um, scoring more points than Kyler Murray, Jared Goff, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Brock Purdy, Geno Smith, Jordan Love, Justin Herbert, CJ Stroud, Tua, like scoring more points than all of those guys. I just listed like all of these QBs that went above him rounds and rounds and rounds above him. It feels like Sam Darnold should have got a little bit of love in the voting. You know, no votes. That feels crazy. But I, I agree with you Bucky Irving to me is probably the waiver wire pickup that I would have went with um I, I think back to early days of the BDG league this year where uh going into week one I picked Bucky Irving up off the waiver wire he didn't get drafted I said hey I'm just pick him up why not and then mm -hmm. it was about to be the Thursday night football game you know in our leagues that we play in if you pick somebody up they're on your bench you did not start them you can drop them after the game's played and pick somebody else up for the Sunday slate. So it's like a, a strategic thing that you can pick up a Thursday night player handcuff, hold them. If somebody gets hurt in the Thursday night player game, you got it. If not, you drop them, you go pick somebody else up. Yeah. They didn't allow that to happen in the BDG league. So it was like I picked up uh, Samaj P. Ryan. Um, for the Thursday night football game. He had just gotten traded over to Kansas City. Dropped Bucky Irving to pick him up. And I was like, all right, if Samaje doesn't have a decent day today, you know, I'm going to just go pick Bucky back up. Didn't happen. Bucky Irving ends uh -huh. up going to another manager's team. And I picked up Bucky Irving first off the waiver wire, and he never hit the waiver wire again the entire year. Sucks. Whatever. I But I should have known the rules, but also at the same time, I hate that rule. I let more more roster flexibility more movement in the league is healthier in yeah. my opinion uh i think he should have been the the award winner i also you know i'm just going to talk about his stats real quick because if you picked him up off the waiver wire it was a little bit of a slower start he is the running back 23 in fantasy points per game right now 700 rushing yards 300 in the air so he's already cracked a thousand as a rookie in a timeshare i think next year it's pretty much going to be 1a bucky irving the entire way uh rashad white i think is still going to be involved uh next year but uh he's definitely going to have a, a much higher ADP next year than he had this year. This year, his ADPs was in like the 150s, 160s. So you were yeah. getting him 15th, 16th round in 10 team leagues. You were getting him, you know, 14th round or something like that in your in your 12 team. So very tough um, to really argue that he wasn't a waiver wire pick of the year because he wasn't being drafted for a, a good chunk of the year. I do think the runner up deserves some mentioning because Bo Nix has been on fire and you picked him yes. up off of waivers and he has been very good. All of these guys, man, have been very good. Tyrone Tracy was very good for a good chunk of the year. I think he's still going to be very good the rest of the year. Juwan Jennings obviously has now outperformed Debo Samuel ever since Brandon Ayuk went down. Um, he also had that 50 point week that one week that we all picked him up. Uh, all of these guys have been good, man, but Bucky takes the cake. 42% was the highest. The runner up was 24% for Bo Nix, so he still won by a fairly large margin. I think most of the people believe Bucky Irving is the waiver wire pickup of the year. Yeah, man, I can't argue with him, man. I can't argue with that. All right, well, let's go from waiver wire pickup to breakout player of the year. Uh, this year, the nominees that we had, Sam Darnold was in the breakout player of the year. He went also waiver wire breakout. Sam Darnold had two award nominations. Baker Mayfield was a breakout player uh, of the year nominee. Chuba Hubbard, Chase Brown, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. Those are the five nominees for the award. Some very good re breakout candidates, in my opinion. Our predictions at the beginning of the year, you predicted Isaiah Likely 
<laughs> it looked good week one. <laughs> it looked good for about one week. It looked good. Now it looked good probably for what four weeks, five weeks. Yeah, something like that. And then I think Mark Andrews kind of just got back to being hot. Um, but it looked good for a little bit. My prediction was Jackson Smith and Jigba as the uh, breakout player of the year. Now, when you come to the nominees and you come to the voting, the winner of the award for breakout player of the year was Jackson Smith and Jigba. That is who the people voted for. 36% of the votes. There was a lot of votes uh, really all around the board. Baker got some votes. Chuba got some votes. Uh, I, I want to say, I'm, I hope I'm not speaking out of my ass, but I want to say Sam Darnold got 0% of the votes again for you to be kidding me uh, he got zero percent of the votes for breakout player zero percent of the votes for waiver wire but the runner up for this award was chase brown chase brown got 30 percent of the votes so it was jsn 36 chase 30 you think it should have been jsn is jsn the true winner yes but this definitely was the um the vote that i think had the most parity yeah for sure i mean you had like 36 30 and then there was uh baker at like six percent tuba was at like 12 percent sam or something like that sam got like zero percent <laughs> so talk to me about talk to me about jackson man what why do you think he should have won the award i mean let's let's just put it out there um i think we both were high on jackson i think we both went into the season that this is the put up or shut up season yep. for jsn and he put up <laughs> like he put up man he he came out he lived up to the expectations that we thought he could live up to and i think that's just what what, what chase brown he wasn't even on my radar um baker mayfield to me he broke out last season so i didn't okay. see this as as a true you know breakout you know type of situation sam donald deserved more than come on guys i'm on he deserved see it's hard to get the stink of someone thinking you a bust off of you baker had to do it baker had to do it baker let baker be your spirit animal sam donald because you know walking his footsteps because people are surely still doubting you and you're going to have to go to another NFL franchise and do the same thing for people to believe in you. And there's a lot of people saying that if he goes somewhere where Kevin O'Connell's system is not ran and he's going to turn back to the same old Sam Donald, you're going to have to prove them wrong. Um, yeah. But other than I that, JSN, 100%, I'm on board with JSN. I hate that I traded him away and done. I hate it. Tried to buy me a championship using the wrong guy. I traded somebody else. What did you do? I traded him. What was the trade? At the because time, I did the, the same thing. At the time, the trade was a match. It was the trade that I did where I got like Tua, JSN, um, Chris Olave. It was like, like I got back home, but the thing is, Olave got injured. It, it was just, it was just a big, you know, yeah, cluster. You know what? So I hate that the part with JSN, but at the time, he wasn't doing what he's doing now. I traded, I traded JSN one week before he like had that what was it 16 target game 17 target game and then it really was pretty much jsn's wide receiver room ever since i traded him one yeah. week before that it was the week that they activated christian mccaffrey i traded jsn for christian mccaffrey on a team that was loaded and said hey i'm just gonna get christian mccaffrey and go win this thing yeah shit really wish i didn't do that shit now i'm curious what did i get back for jsn not great um, but look, man, JSN, he's the wide receiver six on the year. He is the wide receiver six on the year, bro. Uh, he's just been balling, man. Uh, I think a lot of these guys were were worthy of nomination. I mean, Baker Mayfield is QB5. Sam Darnold's QB7. Uh, you look at Chase Brown. He's running back 11. Chuba's running back 12. We got guys all over the place that have broken out. Um, I, I think you're right about that Sam Darnold assessment a little bit because people you, you felt like Baker broke out last year, but people are now nominating him as a breakout the year after. Next yeah. year, Sam Darnold has a good year. Are we going to finally give him the breakout You know, term? Is that what we're going to give him the, the label? Yeah. Yeah, they have to. They have to respect them. Just you have to get it next. A prove it year. Now, now that you've been a bust, we have to have a prove it year, and then we'll take you seriously the year after. Yeah, I guess yeah. that's what it is. Whatever. Um, let's move on to the next one. We only have two awards left, and we can go through these fairly quickly because we've already talked about um some of these guys. Hopefully, that wasn't a spoiler. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Paul. Um, we got rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Uh, your prediction at the beginning of the year was Caleb Williams. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it was Caleb. Yeah. My prediction at the beginning of the year was Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, as rookie of the year. Neither of those guys ended up being nominees. Neither of them. The nominees for the award are Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Brian Thomas Jr., Malik Neighbors, and Brock Bowers. The winner of this award for rookie of the year, Brock Bowers wins rookie of the year. Oh, 
Rock. Over Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels was the runner-up at 44% of the vote. Uh, Brock Bowers got 50%. So he ends up winning this award. Um, it was really just him and Jaden that got votes. The only other guy who got votes was Bo Nix. Brian Thomas, no votes. Malik Neighbors, no votes. Um, look, man, how do you feel about that? Because I, I think a lot of the people, if this vote took place two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I think it would have been Jaden Daniels who won this award. But we got those extra weeks to finish the regular season with Brock Bowers going crazy. You agree? It's Brock? Is is it Brock over Jaden? And what's crazy is that Jaden Daniels has went crazy his last two weeks too. So, so it's, not, it's not like Jaden. Jaden has just been sitting on his hands here, but I'm really, look, I love Brock Bowers. I'm really surprised he won this award. I was sure Jaden Daniels was going to win this award because Jaden Daniels was a quarterback that you can get what round three four he, and, yeah in super flex for sure he was coming off the board as like qb 12 to 15 range yeah and you know if you get him you're getting top end quarterback one production that late in the draft he can win you a lead brock bowers you get that type of production as late as you draft him in the draft take him in the draft you're getting a possible league winner there as well so i think it's definitely not surprising that two guys who could be lead and that's not to take anything away from bo nicks neighbors and um whoever btj but btj see when you're a jaguar you just get forgotten instantly um btj is nothing to take anything away from those guys but it's a clear clear top two in this category who could have possibly handed you the keys to win the league and that is brock bowers Jaden daniels surprised that Jaden daniels didn't win but not entirely surprised because brock bowers is a stud yeah i mean look man i I think both of these guys, Jaden Daniels and Brock Bowers, I think when we talk about those guys moving forward in Dynasty, in Redraft, in Redraft, both of those guys are going to be some of the top picks at their position next year. Um, I think Brock will be the top pick at his position. I think Jaden Daniels is probably going to end up being like a top five, top six pick. I think he's going to be in the same conversation next year as CJ Stroud was this year. And CJ Stroud was being drafted as like QB four or five range. I just think that's going to be what happens in Dynasty. You said what? I'd be careful though. I, I don't that disagree. Cliff Kings, that, that, Cliff, that Cliff Kingsbury shelf life is not a joke. <laughs> he, Cliff may not even be the OC there next year. He may get a I, head coaching job. Hopefully um, not when <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, but look, man, I, I think Daniels and, and Bowers, we might be talking about these guys as, I mean, Daniels for sure. In dynasty startups, he's a first round pick. In Brock Bowers as a tight end might be flirting with first round pick. Yeah. In, in dynasty startups. I think these guys are legit. Um, it was it was a two man race to me. When I saw the nominees, it was Brock or Jaden. I kind of wanted to vote Jaden. Um, when it was when it came down to it, I think I was gonna lean Jaden. Uh, but I don't I don't have I don't have any negative feelings that it's it's Brock Bowers. I think he's a stud as well. And honestly, um, maybe maybe I was jaded with Jaden. Maybe I think it should have been him, but I it should be Brock. I don't know. It should be Brock. It feels like there is no wrong answer here, actually. Yeah. Yeah, not to take away, like you said, from Bo and Malik Neighbors. Both of those guys had, you know, good years. Even BTJ had a good year considering the circumstances they just didn't have the year that those guys had um it's just crazy to me too man to think that like uh, at the beginning of the year first three weeks of the season you know everybody was losing their mind over malik neighbors it was like malik neighbors is is it's justin jefferson jamar chase and malik neighbors that is it these are the the three guys moving forward at the at the wide receiver position i think we're just, a little bit overzealous it's just crazy and insane to me that caleb and marvin harrison jr didn't even make the nominee list i mean honestly that first huge game that Marvin had with Kyler, I just like, okay, I thought it was all Turn it on from here. Go. Yeah, all systems go from there, but that didn't end up happening. I still think, I still think, I think, honestly, I think the same for him, Marvin Harrison and Caleb. I think they'll both be fine. I think if anything, it just proves that progression is not linear. Like every guy is not going to come into the league and just from right off bat be this generational stud. Some guys, even if people thought they were going to do that, it's going to take a lot of time because the NFL has a lot of different nuances that, you know, rookies have to navigate. So just because they weren't on a um, nominee list don't mean that you guys should fade them next year or like not trade for them or not like, you know, have faith in them if they're already on your team. Just know that this year isn't the year that they could have won rookie of the year. So they're going to have to try to go for a different award next year. Simple as that. Yeah, they they might be, you know, nominees for breakout player of the year next year. Follow, yeah. the, follow the Jackson Smith and Jigba path because 
because he did not, you know, win rookie of the year, his rookie year. He was actually probably in consideration for one of the, one of the bigger busts at the rookie position, uh, I guess at the rookie wide receiver spot. And then this year, breakout player of the year. So you're right there. Um, but let's move on to the fantasy football MVP, man. Uh, the most prestigious award, the guy that we feel like is the most valuable player in all of fantasy sports right now. Uh, the nominees for the award are Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Saquon Barkley, and Jamar Chase. Those are the four guys. We're talking about four league winning guys. Obviously, that's what you have to be to be the MVP. Uh, our predictions for who was going to win this award going into the year. Your prediction for fantasy football MVP, CD Lamb. My prediction for fantasy football MVP, Josh Allen. The winner of the MVP award is Josh Josh Allen. Josh won the fantasy football MVP award vote 40 5% of the votes is what he brings in. Uh, The runner-up for the award, actually kind of surprising to me because I would have put this award between two players. I would have put it between Josh Allen and Saquon Barkley, but Jamar Chase comes away as the runner-up. 27% of the votes. Uh, Saquon got a good chunk of the votes as well. Yeah, 27%, um, 45% for Josh Allen. I think Saquon got like... 18 to 20 something percent Lamar got like four percent of the votes Lamar didn't get a lot of the votes and I think it's because people voted for Josh Allen as QB of the year so if you can't even win you know the best player in your position group maybe you're not eligible for the MVP uh so maybe that makes sense but it was it was really a three-man race Josh Allen Saquon Barkley Jamar Chase but Josh Allen wins Jamar is the runner-up Saquon comes in third place let us know in the comment section man are you upset that Saquon is third place in fantasy football MVP war what do you think about that I think I think this is a no-brainer too I thought Josh Allen. I now I I picked CD Lamb, but I think for obvious reasons, a lot of us probably thought that CD Lamb would have at least been in conversation. He yep. had he had a quarterback, he was practically the only wide receiver on the team. So I mean it was yep. a very logical thought. But um Josh Allen, once the season got rolling, I think Josh Allen is a no-brainer. Jamar Chase, I'm not surprised that he was the runner up because he gained more of his vote than Saquon did in, in their position group. So, I mean, he had 97%. Taekwon had 94%. So, I'm not surprised that in MVP voting, he would also outscore Saquon Barkley. But I think uh, the community got it right. Picking Josh Allen, I'm very interested to see what would have happened if Brock Bowers would have got any votes in this category and if he would have had more votes than Lamar. I'm very interested in that. But I think... um, Clearly, still, Josh Allen would have ran away with it. But, um, yeah, I think you made the right pick start the season. I think the community made the right pick and voting for him. And he is the fantasy MVP. Yeah, man. I It just, again, and full disclosure here, man, like for the folks at home, like I did vote Josh Allen QB of the year. I voted him MVP. Like I've been on Josh Allen. Um, I mean, you know, War, we've been playing fantasy football for a long time. I've been on Josh Allen before Josh Allen was Josh Allen. You know what I'm saying? Like I liked him before he turned into QB one. And I've just been a big josh allen fan forever i got one of i got a pop funko of josh allen sitting right here on the shelf like I I, i've been a josh allen guy go ahead i dropped them before you dropped him. I or did I sell him for Fab or did I? It was horrible. Oh, you, it was you horrible. sold him for Fab the year that he turned into QB one, like week two. You were like, I don't need the extra QB. I'm gonna just sell him. Uh, <laughs> that was a, that was a redraft league. I think you sold him for like a hundred Fab. It was like 2017 or some shit like that. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, not great. Um, but yeah, I, I've I've been a big Josh Allen fan. So there may have been a little bit of fandom in the vote, but I, I just think that. You know, everything that we saw, bro, he was, uh, there's just zero reason to fade Josh Allen, in my opinion, moving forward. Like, he's going to be him until he's not. And it's just, it's going to be the only way to make Josh Allen not be him at this point is going to be his body doesn't allow him to do it anymore. And um, I think it's going to be a while for that to happen too. Like to me, he is, he's dynasty QB one until further notice. And he probably should have been and has been for a while. I remember last off season, I did a, a quarterback rankings video at just a few weeks from now, you know, right as soon as the off season started going into last year. And I, I said, Josh Allen is my QB one over Patrick Mahomes and everybody lost their mind. People were like, why would you put him over Patrick Mahomes? You can't put him over Patrick Mahomes. Well, Josh Allen is is we're talking fantasy football, folks. I mean, I I understand the argument. Josh Allen and you know Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes has his number in the playoffs in real life and things like that. Yeah. Fantasy football, it's not even the same court, bro. They're not even playing on the same field right now, fantasy football wise. Oh, brother. So, uh, yeah, look, man, it just it makes sense. I, I I love I love the Josh Allen here. And you said you dropped him before. I drafted Josh Allen in like the eighth round of a, of a dynasty startup. You know, 
way, way back in the day. I have a history of doing dumb shit at the quarterback position. I'm, I'm, I, tra- I traded him for Fab. I also dropped Patrick Mahomes before he became Patrick Mahomes. But I've Just, learned from and, me. And let's let's be clear though. Let's be clear when we say this. These are redraft leagues that you're talking about. They're not dynasty, so you're a little bit more yes. reactive in those redraft leagues. The dynasties, yes. you're not doing this shit. Yes, yes. Drop Patrick Mahomes to pick up Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> yeah man but yeah, he, had, it, he had the orange tinted gl- uh, glasses on that day folks i had at the time i had no reason to believe that he would become the greatest quarterback in nfl history or one of the greatest in nfl history it, he hadn't had a full Jeez. season yet he showed some flashes at the end of the season so i was just like i might as well take the guy that's on on the bears versus the guy who i don't know what he's gonna do but you know the rest of the system oh my god you and the bears both made the same fumble god damn it uh, yeah we <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Whatever, man. That is the Fantasy Football Award. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, you know, give us some ideas, you know, in the future. I, I want to do this every single year. We've done it for two years now. I want to do it every year. In the future, are there other awards that you guys want to see us hand out? Is there, you know, show-specific awards? Maybe you want to see, like, the best show moment of the year. Maybe we give awards to ourselves as well. Uh, things like that. The best call of the year. The worst call of the year. Maybe you want to see something like that. You know, turn a little bit into fantasy receipts and give awards to the players. I don't know. What maybe that's something we do. Subscriber of the year. Subscriber of the year. Guy subscriber of the year. The maybe somebody who's... Trades, the one most active guy in the community. Like, what y'all want to see? What do y'all want to see? Yeah. Let us know, man. I like that idea. Uh, just whatever other awards you want to see, put it in the comment section. Um, we'll we'll try and put those in consideration for next year's awards. I got a living doc, so we can we can just load it up with award uh, nominees and and things like that. Um, if you enjoyed the content today, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and go join the Discord. Like I said, the Discord is where the people voted on these awards. So in the future, you want to be a part of that Discord. Lots of perks for being in there, and it's free to join. So there is no risk in doing that. Um, and also. I do want to mention one more thing before I turn it over to you, War, for your little plug. Um, Mm -hmm. This is the last episode of Let's Talk Dynasty for a couple of weeks. Uh, We're going to drop this episode today, uh, and then the next two weeks, I'm going to be out of town. Then I'm taking a little one-week vacation, folks. You know, with the the grind of the fantasy football season, everything, you know, it hits. I need a one-week break, just not doing shit. I don't want to do shit. Well learned. Appreciate it, man. So we're going to do that. Uh, The next episode of Let's Talk Dynasty will be jam. January. Uh, it's the first week of January. So pretty much a little pause from now for the rest of December. Uh, but just want to let you guys know that that doesn't mean that the content stopping. I'm going to finish out the rest of the regular season. Obviously, we're going to do the fantasy football playoffs week 16, 17, talk all that stuff. But uh, look, man, where can they find you war if they want some additional content? I know your channel has been growing like crazy this year. You had a uh, you had a goal of a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. You blew that one out of the water. So where the, where can they find you at? And uh, you know, what What can they find there? Yeah, you can find me on Crimson Mask Pro Wrestling. We talk about WWE. Man, I used to say we talk about WWE and AEW, man, but I might have to start doing the videos about the death of AEW here soon. So I'm going to talk about it, but probably not positively. But, you know, I still hope for AEW. But, um, yeah, we're pushing towards 3,000 3, subscribers. Uh, it's been a pretty good year. Definitely exceeded my expectations. I'm expecting even more success. Next season, I want you guys to... To be a part of that so come over and subscribe to us at crimson mass pro wrestling pro wrestling with an attitude hell yeah man and it's just look man it's just i'll say congratulations as well it's just a testament that when you dedicate time you dedicate your energy you dedicate yourself those goals that you set they can be exceeded that's a, a little takeaway for everybody at home as well so keep that in mind i know we're heading into the new year as well kind of everybody sets resolutions at the beginning of the year set those resolutions for yourself but also just understand that when you set those and you shoot for those and you're consistent every day trying to reach those, whatever those goals are for you, I promise you're going to blow those out of the water just like you did it with this this year. So I uh, just want to you know leave that for the folks at home. Um, nothing else for you guys today, though. So we will see you on our next episode, uh, first week of January. That's when we'll see you for Let's Talk Dynasty. Uh, War, enjoy your break as well because you're getting a break too. It's not just me. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Till then, peace out.